December 29th, Berry Big Circus, Circus Entrance. Hey everyone, it's Calvin, also known as Rummer, and this is Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. Would you believe that I almost said The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword? This would be a really weird chapter in Skyward Sword. Let's get into this. You hear that? It sounds like two people are arguing. Who's arguing? Alright, let's do it. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, it's not two people, it's freaking Ben and Trilo. I mean, it's two people, it sure is. I hit the microphone, Jesus. Quit your whining, let's just get, uh, give this a shot already. Alright, let's go. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. Okay. What are you doing? Gently down the stream. Come on, you know that. I'm trying my best, but Trilo, this is, is just isn't going to work. Do you enjoy saying dumb things? You're going to have to be on your own someday. You can't handle something as simple as this. What are you going to do then? I was thinking as well, we were talking about in the comment section as well, which I actually love the comment section belonging to uh, these videos because uh, it, it, it all, it's either speculation or it's people just like making these weird ass jokes. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Um, hello, Ben. And I was, t I was thinking about like there has to be another character or Regina has to have something to do with it. She has to be some sort of like ace for us in this case. The ace of the case. Hello, Ben. Hello to you, Trilo. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're on a secret crash training course? I'm sorry. She could crash training? Whoa. Yes, Trilo wouldn't give up until I said we'd try out his idea for a new routine. So, we were trying to sing in a round for our new ventriloquist act. In a round? You can really do that? That's incredible. See, see, even they are surprised by the idea. I told you. They're not the only ones. You even surprised me with your idea. Once we get a grip on the basics, it's just a matter of practice. I talk about it too much, but the, like, I love the like little quirks in their animations. It's great. You, 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 you think so? Well, I almost forgot, I want you to give this back to you. Wait, can you give this back? Is that like, is that not still evidence? Do you have to wait until the case is over? Now that I've got this ring back, it's time to take one more shot at Regina. Maybe not. Today's trial. It was today? Oh, it's today, we're doing it today again. Um, oh no, it was, was today? Okay, I know that you already testified in court today. You want to talk about what we saw, right? Yes. Well, at first we thought it was the old man. Just looking at his walk and how he acted, right, Ben? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. But then we said hello and didn't even get a reply. Not to mention he was draped in those gaudy symbols. So there's- so I'm- there has to be a reason why he didn't say hello back to them. And I'm wondering what that is. What would have- uh, what would you have thought if he wasn't wearing those symbols? Hmm, what do you think, Ben? What, um, I would have thought it was the ringmaster. Hmm, something just uh, isn't adding up here. I wonder who they really saw. I think it was the ringmaster. Um, I think he probably borrowed Max's coat or something to go out in the cold or, or something like that. It's probably way too simple, but we're gonna have to find out why. Why you want to mar marry a 16-year-old girl? I was hoping I could ask you about Regina. I'm completely serious about her. That's why I'm waiting for her even now. Like, and here's the thing, right, guys? I know that, like, it's a puppet and supposed to be a different person, and, like, yeah, maybe the puppet's, like, two years old <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Ben's a 31-year-old man. <laughs> really? That's so sweet. But if you really wanted to see Regina, shouldn't you check out the tent? Ha. Huh. You haven't got a clue about things, do you, sweetheart? Uh. Waiting like this is part of being in love. How so? If you had a clue, you would know that waiting is such a sweet, wonderful torture. This is a weird thing, and I'm going to talk about this right now. When I was younger and when I was a teenager, a lot of people I would talk to said, like, would who, who were, like, over-the-top mushy would say there's, like, beauty in the chase, man. There's beauty in that part before you were in a relationship. Like, to me, like, I never really just thought about all that kind of bullshit. <laughs> it's like, not that love is bullshit, but, like, just that thing of, like, all like waiting and not knowing the answer is is fun because like it isn't fun is it guys it's not very fun when your body aches for your partner's love that's one of the best parts yeah to me let's just like cut cut out the cut out that the, that stuff you know <laughs> cut it out um yeah i knew that poor maya she's so red she looks like a vine ripe tomato um like what it's trying to explain more what i'm trying to say like people would always be like uh, it's kind of like the build-up is fun, which like, everyone can kind of like agree in a way that it is kind of fun. It's kind of like, you know, you get those butterflies and things like that. But the idea of like torching yourself on purpose, I don't I don't get it. I just don't get it. Sorry, I, I clicked um, B by accident. So how is this new routine working out? Will you just, uh, will you two just take a chill pill already? Our routines, our routines are secret. We're going to take the ventriloquism world by storm. It's a real revolution. That sounds incredible. 
But let me make one thing clear. We're not going to take on the world just because some jerk said we should. That jerk? Max Galactica. Performer should aim for the world. Who does he think he is? Sounds like pretty good advice. I don't know. Trilly, you seem to be really fired up about all this. He needs to realize that he isn't the only one who can conquer the world stage. You're right. You're right. Mark my words. I, Trilo Quist, will win the Grand Prix. By the way, thanks so much uh, for someone pointing out that it is uh, Ben Trilo Quist. Like a ventriloquist. That's pretty good. You're the man now, doll. Row, row, row your boat will be the key to our glorious victory. Um, not to rain on your parade, but uh, wouldn't a more mature song be best? Hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? Don't screw this up, you gotta be part of this too! Trilo and Ben, when they're not a part of the trial, I've noticed when I met them first, and after I met them, like, now, when I mean them now, way more fun to be around. I feel like during the trial, because they're always, like, lying and way too fidgety, it can kind of get a bit over the top sometimes, and, and trying to siphon any information out of them gets a bit rough. But here, just, like, hearing about their, like, little stories, I love it. It's fun. At least to me it is. Okay, we can go to the big top or the house or the plaza. Let's go to the plaza. December 29th, lodging house, plaza. Oh, it's you two. You look like you just got hit by a truck. Shouldn't you get some rest? Uh, I'm taking a rest right now. I've been listening to some crazy clown's life story. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Miss Von Karamer told me to come down here and do this for her. Yeah, I figured as much. Let me tell you something, pal. Listening to that old clown sucks all your energy. Every time he's done talking, he looks at you like you should be doing something. Yeah, he's waiting for the laugh. He's holding for applause. Mm, I think he's waiting for you to laugh at his jokes. Yep. I know that, pal. Do you have any idea how much your face hurts if you fake laughing at that much? Yeah. <laughs> we all know the pain of being polite at some point in our lives, right? Francesca really set you up that bad this time, didn't she? If you ask me, she should be listening to Mo herself. No way, pal. You're not going to get me to backbite a woman with a whip. No way. So, at first I was kind of like... I had like I was actually thinking about this yesterday when I went away from this. I kind of like the idea that all the odds are stacked against us, even she has the police on her, like, under her thumb. Uh, because the winning of the case is going to feel that much better when we do it. Why are you defending her? Prosecutor Von Karma's always got her eye on us. And every time you definitely don't want to, uh, her to show up. Don't show up. Don't show up. Don't show up. Don't show up. Looks like she's wound him up pretty, wound him up pretty tight. Yeah, that is pretty rough. She's directly above us as we speak. Huh? How's that possible? According to the, that clown, the culprit jumped from here and disappeared into the sky. Wait, what? If that's what happened, it means the killer passed right by this window, pal. Oh, I see. Who lives in that room, behind the window up there? The acrobat's got his room up on the third floor. Oh, we're gonna meet someone new. Pretty soon, Miss Von Karma's gonna start an investigation up there. So don't get any ideas of going up to the acrobat's room. Got it, pal? Gumshoe, I love you. You're a great cop. You have a great soul, great heart. You want to help people. But at this point, I'm gonna have to disobey all your orders. Francisca von Karma. Once she's done with her investigation, I think I'll go up there and check it out. So, she's like, I guess, I guess, like we can't go there yet. I mean, we can go to Mo's room. December twenty ninth, lodging house, first floor, of Mo's room. Mo's not here. If he was here, he would have been able to tell even before he stepped into the room. I'm sure you would have heard him laughing away. Ha ha ha. What do you think he's laughing at when he's all by himself? I always thought he was just thinking up new jokes. Hmm, he must really love his work. He does. Everything looks pretty much the same in here, though. Um, so I think that we're going to wait for Mo to come back. Usually if you go away and do other stuff, um, characters tend to show up more after you know. Hello, guys. How's it going? Uh, we'll go into the big top. We'll see who's here. Uh, December 29th, Barry Big Circus, Big Top. Where's Regina? I don't know, probably getting away. No, she she likes Trilo, doesn't she? I don't know. But if she's with that tiger, I don't want to find out. Let's hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> Nick, you're kind of a chicken, aren't you? 
No, 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 no. I'm just, um, allergic to wild tigers. Yeah, that's, that's sure. I, like, it's not really terrible to be like, yeah, everything looks the same again. It's not terrible to be freaking afraid of, um, like, whatchamacallit, to, to be afraid of, um, let's go to the cafeteria first. To be afraid of tigers. December 29th, Big Top Cafeteria. Oh, here he is. All right, welcome to the wonderful, fabulous, the cafeteria. Yikes, he's in an awfully good mood. Well, yesterday he was nearly killing us, so. All right, you know what time it is, riddle time. Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza? What is... Stop. <laughs> what is this joke already? I can already tell this is going to be a bad joke. Um, come on, you can answer this, it's easy. Because cafeteria Mexican pizza is obviously a weapon of bowel destruction. Yeah, because it's not made properly, I suppose. But it's wrong. Try again. Okay, what do you think, girly? Um, I got it. Okay, what is your answer? Because they're in the cafeteria. Maya! Dear God. <laughs> I'm dead. Exactly. It's an incredibly sad place, that cafe. I did it. What's going on? He's being too nice. Today's been a really crazy day. Maya, you, just, you don't even get the right to speak anymore. <laughs> You're telling me I didn't think it was going to be so tough. Tough? Yeah, it was tough. A tough crowd. Uh, that's what you call a crowd that refuses to laugh. For instance, it was such a tough crowd this morning, I had to smash watermelons. Huh? I told them all the great story and even great jokes, but no one busted out laughing. You even used the famed no shoes, no shirt, no service joke. Exactly. How can you not laugh at stunning comedy like that? Okay. <laughs> Are you 100% sure about your testimony today? I saw what I saw, I swear, that creep just... Flew through the air? It was exactly... It wasn't exactly flying, per se, it was more like floating. The silhouette of his face set made me positive it was Max. Someone said in the comment section yesterday that it was actually like, uh... It was like someone taking a, um... Like a piece off of a PowerPoint. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, I don't see a side clock, he must be telling the truth. Uh, he must be? I suppose. I mean, like... Is there anything else in here that we can take a look at? This is strange, there's nothing on top of the sand. There, look here, Max has written on it, it must be a VIP tip. We saw this before, didn't we? Well, he could still eat hamburgers, right? Yeah, it seems that, like, we, we, um... We explored this area. You know? I suppose, like, one thing we could do is, I'm thinking maybe we could, like, I was actually thinking about this all day yesterday, like, I want to see the reaction to, uh, the Grand Prix photo. I should have showed it to Ben, I will show it to Ben as well, because I think that, like, they're jealous of him at this point anyway? I want to see what reaction it instills. Ah, not this picture, he showed it to you guys too? Yeah, there we go. Ha, huh, you seen it as well? Well, you know what they say about Maximilian Galactica? He really gets around. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, even Maya didn't find that one funny. He didn't just show me the picture. What do you mean? He showed me his bus too. Let me tell you, that thing is enormous. It's in the picture, I think. He makes us worship it every day. He makes us bow to it. What? I have to say, though, I love Max's pants, though. I want Max's pants. Well-dressed, dude. He got a big bust? I wouldn't mind hearing more about Max's bust. N not that I'm into that sort of thing. So, like, a bust is just, like, from your chest up, right? Like, chest and shoulder up. Yeah, it's not. It's nothing too bad. I guess we'll talk about Max's bust. Max's bust should be on the small table over there, but it's not. There's nothing over there. Really? Oh, yeah. Hmm, when was it? I'd say about five days ago, all of a sudden, the bust disappeared. It disappeared? If you want to see it, there's a photo on the bulletin board over there. It looks really cool. Max just had to put it up the, the picture up. Hmm. Hey, this thing is really cool. It is. It looks really neat. Nick, Nick, I want someone to make a bust of me. Sure, as long as I'm not paying for it. 
Ah, uh, Max G bust added to the core record. Is there anything else to change about this place? Nope, nothing's changed that I can see. I wonder if he's actually thinking about this or if he is setting up a bad joke. Nope, nope, I'm drawing a blank here. A quiet mo is a good mo in my book. I guess there really aren't any other things that have changed, huh? Well, there is this one tinsy tiny thing that does seem different. Tell us, tell us. So, I had to go away for a bit. <laughs> it's been about two hours, but hey, we're still in the conversation. What changed? Uh, well, on the morning of the crime over on that bulletin board, this piece of paper was posted front and center. How can we trust you, though? Piece of paper. It's torn, so I don't know what it said, but I could see its title. Yikes. What does it say? It says, To the Murderer. So someone is fully acknowledging that there was a murderer here. I'm kind of afraid to read on. <laughs> yep, that's what it says, but the rest of it has been ripped off. And I don't know who posted it. Mm. When did you find this? The morning before the murder- Wait. Yes, the ringmaster was killed the night after this paper was discovered. Who in the world posted this thing? Posting the cafeteria on the day of the crime, the torn states... Then torn. It states, to the murderer. Nick, I think you better follow up on this important lead. Well, would it be... I wonder would it be a bad idea? And this is just what I'm thinking. Um, to go back to the detention center and show this to... Wait, first of all, I want to present something to you if I could. Can I present this picture? Because I want to see your reaction. Would you mind taking a look at this? Uh, that, uh, I, it's... Okay. Okay, I guess not everyone's going to react to it. Okay, so I want to show that torn piece of paper to Max. Because I, because I think that... We know for certain, because we, who knows, we might be defending a criminal. I don't know how, like, all the Phoenix Wright cases go, but it, I'd like to win this one at least. But I think it's a good idea to give him this paper. Do you know anything about this note? The morning of the murder. It was posted on the wall in the cafeteria. I do know all about that note. When I read it, my heart certainly skipped a beat. Your heart skipped a beat? While I was enjoying my morning tea, the ringmasters and the uh, company entered the room. And company? I guess it wasn't really a company, it was just ringmaster and my sweetie pie. Yeah, Regina, isn't it? When the ringmaster read the note, he turned an incredi incredibly... He turned an incredible bright red. All of a sudden, he tore it off the wall and shoved it into the pocket of his tailcoat. Whoa! Out of curiosity, what in the world was written on that thing? Let's see. Uh oh I don't want to steal the fun away from uh, fun from my sweeties. Go and find out. Wait, no, that's not how this works, Max. I'm defending you. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. You might also want to ask my sweetie pie princess. Max, this is not how it works. I guess is how it works. <laughs> Let's go back and find Regina. I guess. Has she come back to the big top? We haven't been to the ringmaster's room. Man, I, there are some cool posters here. Actually, I would like them in real life. December 29th, Big Top Ringmaster's Room. Max and the ringmaster said they had their talk in this room. Yes, that could have been when the ringmaster put on Max's costume and went outside. That piece of paper, right? No, no that's a, what, the, the thing you... What, what do you call it? Like the napkin thing? Uh, why'd you do it anyway? Was it really that cold or something? Um, So I suppose you can like examine... Like this. I, I still think it's like for show. I don't... Because we saw the paper in this before, but I don't... It couldn't be the paper, could it? There's a scrap paper shoved into the pocket of the tailcoat. You know, I've got a feeling I know what that is. I bet it's the other half of that note Mo gave us. This is gonna be... Well, we didn't find Regina, but we found this. Then let's hurry up and check this thing out, Nick. I knew it. It fits perfectly with the other pieces. What does it say? Oh, I'm actually really nervous. This might ruin our whole case. <laughs> to the murderer, I have conclusive e evidence of what took place. Meet me at 10 p.m. tonight at the Lodging House Plaza. What? 
Tonight at 10 p.m. That's when the murder took place. Now we need to find out who called out the ringmaster. So someone thinks the ringmaster is a murderer? So we've examined everything in this room. I'm wondering, let's go back to the big top and see if Regina's there. Nope. Um, let's go to the, the Big Top Cafeteria. Moe's probably still there, is he? Oh, it's changed. December 29th, Big Top caf Cafeteria. What? Moe's gone. There's a message on the bulletin board. I'm hungry, so I'm off to get some hamburgers. Love, Moe. Hmm, hamburger. Just thinking about it makes me hungry. I love a good hamburger. All of a sudden, I need a burger. Bad. All of a sudden, I need a new partner. Bad. Oh, that's... That's not nice. Okay, so I guess we... Go back to the lodging house? I don't know if they'll let us in yet, but we can try. We still have to, like, go and fight the, the... Oh, here we go, okay. We still have to find the acrobat. Let December 29th, lodging house plaza. Hey, detective, don't you? I'm sure you did a good job as usual. Well, I'm done with the investigation of the acrobat, finally. But we'll miss Von Karma. Oh, shit. Nick? What, what is that sound? That beeping sound? Hmm. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? Every time I hear that sound, she usually's not very far behind. Some sort of pager or something. If you don't mind, pal, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here quick. Yeah, you should. See ya, pal. I'm I'm slightly afraid of Von Karma. I didn't know that Gumshoe could run so that fast. So much for being a flatfoot. Never seen a grown man so afraid of a girl still in her teens. Wait. Hold on. I know I, this is kind of rude to look this up. One second. One second. Von, von Siska Von Karma Age? Wait, what? She's 18? What? <laughs> Give her props, man. That is a fucking girl who's sure of herself. That is a woman who will who is very sure of herself. Holy shit, okay. Well, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. The winds is biting as Oh shit. As biting as lashes from a whip. Von Von Karma. She really did appear. <laughs> I'm more afraid of her now knowing that she actually is just a fucking teenager. It was a real battle in court, wasn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Did you have to jump out and scare us like that? What can I do for you? Tomorrow will be the day, the day my dream finally comes true. You mean the story of my defeat at your hands, making the national news? National news? You possess such a small sense of scale. The global news, Mr. Phoenix Wright, your miserable plight will be known as in known internationally. I think she might be overestimating the importance of a single win uh, just by a smidge. Well, maybe like the returning... It could be a story of some sort, but I'm not sure how valuable it would be to like international news. But we'll see. Um, so should I talk to you about this then? Uh, tomorrow's trial. Miss Von Karma, it appears you got your hands on something big, huh? Huh, I'm amazed you picked up on that much. Anything could... You couldn't hide that look of victory with ten paper bags on your head. That's actually a new um, stance. That's a new stance. We haven't seen that yet. The new um, animation. Uh, I've got conclusive evidence and, conclusive, and a conclusive witness. Need any more hints? A conclusive witness? You must mean the acrobat, right? I'm putting in the summons for him to be called as a witness as you speak. It's the final nail in your coffin, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yeah, yeah, I get it already. You want to beat? And destroy me. <laughs> oh my god. I can't worry about her. I've got to try and find out more information for myself. Revenge. Why do you keep giving Nick the evil eye? It doesn't matter if you prove the defendant guilty tomorrow. Nothing will be able to bring your dad back. That's... Let's not bring him up. My dad? You must mean the esteemed Manfred von Karma. Of course! Your dad! I know you miss him. Enough out of you. One more word and on you'll get a mouthful of whip. Now when did I ever bring up my papa's name in this, or in any conversation? Then... What's this revenge you're talking about? You wouldn't understand, Mr. Phoenix, right? I have to see him again. One more... Time. Him? I'm sure you know to whom... What?
I just got chills. What? Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? Miles uh, Edgeworth is gone. He's gone. Miles Edgeworth. Why would you even bring him up? You haven't forgotten, have you? Do you know who it was that trained the gifted prosecutor Miles Edgeworth? Manfred von Karma? Exactly right. It was my papa. That means that Edward was... Right, again. Miles was like a little brother to me. Huh? Little brother? But Edward and Nick are the same age. Edward. So fucking awesome. The man who inspired me to become an attorney. I fought against him in a few cases. But little after that, the case was over. He vanished. It's your fault he is gone. Huh? It's the truth, isn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... Nick, what does she mean? Ah, oh, no, let's, this is too painful. Edward was never quite the same after that case. And then with the case uh, after that one. He never set foot into the court again. That is sad. And then one day, he just vanished. All he left was a simple note at the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Jesus Christ. That was one year ago. It was a few months after you left to go back home. Mr. Edgeworth, he's dead. I don't believe it. He's still alive. I'm sure of it. Somewhere in this world, he's still alive. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death? Of course he did. You ruined his reputation as a prosecutor. You effectively killed the prosecutor in him. Like, this is something that I don't necessarily... I, I understand what she's saying. Sorry, I had to move the microphone there for a second. But at the same time, I also feel like putting all of your failures onto, you know, the person who beats you, especially in something as serious as a court case, never really works for me. Because, like, if you lost, it just means you weren't able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that my client was a murderer. I'm literally defending people from dying. Like, in, in Japan, it's not a thing where, like, oh, you'll just go away for a few years. The punishments are way steeper than they are over here, for example. Like, I'm defending people from death. I have no problem making Miles Edward lose. Yes, I feel so sorry for him. Of course I do. This idea that, like, his whole career is done because he loses because he feels like he's no longer at his top of his game. But I'm never going to feel bad for defending someone who is on trial for murder. And who clearly didn't do it. If you get what I'm saying, I hope that makes sense. Just like your victory muddied the honor, muddied the honorable name of Von Karma, I'm going to find him, and then I'm going to teach him his rightful place with my own two hands. Nick, about Mr. Edgeworth, I already told you this once. Don't make me do it again. Don't bring up his name in front of me again, okay? Jesus. Nick. Miss Von Karma, what? I don't know if you were God's gift to prosecutors or not, but I've heard... Oh, <laughs> he's coming out of his shell, but I've had just about enough of you, him too. What? What in the world happened? Hm. This dog is all bark and no bite. He's already been defeated. You were defeated once too. Regardless, I have nothing to inform the two of you two today. Tomorrow will be the greatest courtroom battle this country has ever seen. Nick, let's go. We need to talk with the performer on the third floor. I'm sorry I brought it up, Nick. I'm stunned. That is some seriousness that we don't usually see from uh, Phoenix. Like, it's... Uh, and it's, it's honestly refreshing. Like, I'm not going to say it's not refreshing. Um, I'm like... It's really hard to convey my feelings right now because usually I, I'm, you know, guys know I can talk for Ireland. I can talk for my whole country. I could talk forever. But the way this feels feels really strange because on one hand, I understand where Maya is coming from. She definitely wants to know what happened to Miles Edgeworth. But at the same time, this is clearly hurtful for Nick. Uh, I call him Nick now as well. Clearly hurtful for Phoenix at the same time. He deserves to fight back some time. He deserves to have his own voice and to have his own feelings beyond the courtroom of, like, you know, just his silly expressions and his silly movements. He deserves to, like, have that feeling. 
He deserves it.